Hi guys, so I wanted to do a video on a topic that was sent by one of my Instagram followers and he asked, how do you deal with difficult patient deaths? And being an ICU nurse, we deal with a lot of death. It just is part of the job. Sometimes the deaths are planned, so to speak, not planned. That sounds really, that sounds actually like murder. No, not like that at all. Planned as in like family is more prepared that they're coming or the patient's more prepared that it's coming and sometimes they're totally unexpected. Sometimes the deaths are very peaceful. Sometimes they're traumatic and that really affects the nurse a lot. And so I wanted to talk about kind of how to deal with some of those more difficult deaths because most of the time in the ICU when you have a patient pass away, even though it's very sad, um, the family is, I don't want to say somewhat ready for it, but we've kind of prepared the family that this is coming and they make the decision to put the patient on comfort care um, measures and we would maybe take the breathing tube out, stop every, like all the drips and give the medications and let them pass peacefully. And sometimes patients pass within a couple minutes, sometimes a couple hours, sometimes it, they, it's a couple days. It just really depends on the patient and scenario. But there are those deaths that are very difficult and maybe traumatic or just that kind of stand out. And without like getting into too many details, most of the deaths, like I said, are pretty peaceful in the ICU. But every once in a while, like maybe someone will code or you've got a family that is um, very, very emotional. And I'm not saying that in a a mean way but sometimes maybe it's to a point where they're screaming or yelling or and that can kind of be difficult on the nurse just as far as like how you perceive it or how you feel about it um, when you're trying to take care of this patient. So I've seen some traumatic deaths. I've seen some patients that were really young die during codes or maybe they have bled so much that they've literally like bled out. We cannot get enough blood or cannot give enough fluids, cannot put them on enough pr pressers to where they just um, end up passing away because it's so severe. There's nothing that we can do um, about it or like we've been trying and nothing's working. Um, so I've seen some pretty gruesome deaths and it can be very hard on the nurse to process that. I feel like it's one of those things that you don't realize what you're seeing until you go home and you're like, holy shit, <laughs> like that was, that was a lot and it takes a while to process it. Um, so my best advice, and this advice applies to any time you are seeing something difficult or traumatic, gruesome, sad, whatever, in the ICU or whatever nursing world, is you really have to let yourself process the event and talk about it and debrief and talk about it with your coworkers. If you've got a trusted family member or friend, obviously you need to be careful with HIPAA and, and all that stuff. But really, um, sometimes for me, like I go home and I just, I just talk to my husband about what I saw during that day or what I did and, um, just like me venting to him about everything, it just makes me feel better. Or I talk to like my coworkers or fellow nurses, physicians, whatever, we kind of talk about the situation. Um, a lot of nurses sometimes in the moment, we may be joking, not joking, that sounds bad, not like you're gonna be like joking in front of a patient or family member, but we use humor a lot to kind of cope, or sometimes we'll be like, eh, yeah, we're fine, like that was, and in your head you're like, that was terrible, but on the outside we're like portraying this like everything's okay image, and I think that can leave a lot of nurses to feel like they're alone, like should I, should I not be feeling sad, should I not, be crying? Should I not feel angry? Should I not feel anxiety over this situation? Because the people around me are able to just pop back into their normal routine and laugh and joke and just act like nothing happened. And just know that that's a coping mechanism for many nurses. And yes, there are some nurses that are totally numb to it and they can just like blow it off and be fine. But most nurses I, on different levels, but you it affects you in some way whether you let it affect you right then and there in the moment or it affects you that night when you get home from your shift or it affects you months down the road years down the road there everyone it affects everyone um and so it's just really important to process it 
and have a good healthy outlet. I always say like have that healthy life balance, you, whether you work out, like to cook, clean, um, whatever you like to do, take naps, like make sure you're doing those things because it's just, it can be a lot. And if it's getting to a point where it's like really mentally affecting you, then it's it's time to maybe talk to your manager, maybe talk to a therapist, maybe someone, uh, a medical professional who can help in these instances because it's, a lot. Being a nurse is hard. You see a lot of hard things. Um, so that's my advice on how to deal with difficult patient deaths. Um, because at some point in your nursing career, you may or may not deal with this and it can be very, very emotionally tough on you. Um, but know that that's normal. That's like, that's why you're nurses because you, you feel still, you're, you're still a compassionate human being. Anyways, Sorry, such a bummer of a topic, but I thought it was a great question. So thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below, have you ever dealt with a gruesome death or a difficult patient death? How was it for you? What did you do to cope with it? And um, how did you process it? So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.